Hello viewers, this is Jeremy Pang and we are in School of Wok. But if you can't see what they did there, then you need to examine yourself very carefully. Rachel Hogg is also with me. We're going to learn about woks, believe it or not, and we're going to start wok seasoning. Is that correct? Wok seasoning. Which is something I'd never heard of. And the first thing I'm going to do is get my wok out and show it to Jeremy. <laughs> Okay. Let's have a look. Right, so I've had this for about a year and a half. Okay. I've had no formal instruction apart from the Chinese bloke who sold it to me who gave me a few tips. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. It was a, <laughs> it was a man in John Lewis. Other okay. department stores are available. I've cooked quite a few things in it, mainly sort of pseudo-Asian stir-fries, obviously, and it looks <laughs> like that. That's actually pretty good looking. Ha! Ah. I'm relatively impressed with that. What do you think, Rachel? I mean, yes, it's... A is it fine? It's almost there. Yeah, I, the darker your wok, the better it is. That's do you kind of need I was... it to be even? On yeah, yes. like, you'd want it to be a bit more even, but did you do anything with it before you started using it? I heated it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cleaned it because obviously it was a new steel thing. Okay. This is guesswork, really, but when I finished using it, I rinse it with boiling water yeah. and I rub it with a very soft brush and maybe a tiny bit of washing up liquid and then I just dry it on the heat and uh, wipe it down. You, you're a, you're a wok you're a wok master. Oh, is that correct? No, you're absolutely right. And That's where pe most people go wrong. They don't dry it. It's carbon steel, so it's supposed to... You, you, you don't want it to rust, of course, which no. is why you dry it on hob, but you do want to burn it as much as possible. Well, this is... The, the thing is, the first couple of times I used it whilst it was still new. Uh, let's just look at this so that we know. That's my wok with some use, but obviously not professional levels of use. This I'm has been it. used once a week, say. And this is a brand new wok. Yeah, so yours would have, wok. you would have started with that colour, wouldn't you? Yeah, it looked exactly like that. The first few times I used it, it did go a bit rusty. Then I started wiping it dry and rubbing a bit of olive oil in it with a cloth. And then I thought, no, if I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, wrong. It's designed to heat up quickly, so just put it on the on the gas until it dries off. Wave yeah. it around a bit, put it away. I, you know, I don't think there's actually a huge amount that we need to do to finish that off. I think we can finish the sides off. I've scrubbed it and a we'll bit give, too hard. No, it's all right to scrub it. I think we'll give another scrub, but burn it again really well. Did you put a bit of oil on it before you burn it the first time? Yes. Yes, so that little sheet of oil just burns that carbon layer onto well, it I even think more. This is something that scares me in cooking, and it's, it's probably a bit of a Western thing, but I'm terrified of things being too hot, and I generally don't have the wok hot enough. It's it got to be, be smoking hot yes. before you add anything. Yes. Um, but we'll go through this uh, when we're cooking as well, is that sort of being able to change the heat really quickly makes all the difference. Yes, and different bits of it are at different temperatures, aren't they? This yes. is something I said on the cooking show. That the reason this is such a versatile device, <laughs> and it was, you know, it's centuries old, and it was used by nomadic peoples who traveled and couldn't carry a whole cupboard full of pots, is that it actually has the effect of being several rings on a hob. So you've got the very hot one there, then you've got the little rings where you put your baked beans, for example. Is this the, not that you put baked beans in here. <laughs> but these are effectively the smaller rings because they're cooler. This is very thin, so heat dissipates very, very quickly. So that is yes. where we're going to try and get your wok. Look at that. You see, so that's, been, that's probably about the same age as this wok. But we've burnt it all the way round, and it's that circulation of heat from that round bottom, but also the movement. So there you go, if you're interested in cooking, don't come to School of Walk, they burn everything. <laughs> <laughs> so taking it back to sort of basics, for people that might not know, what is the point of seasoning a wok at all? Sort Very of good question. You don't have to season every wok you've got. Mm -hmm. Obviously you've got non-stick woks, which have a non-stick layer. Boo. That be. <laughs> We do sell them, but only because that's what people buy. Uh -huh. And it, it, it's, it's taken 10 years, to be honest, to get people to sort of coming here and going straight for a carbon steel wok as opposed to a non-stick wok. The difference is, it, it's, it's exactly the same wok, it's just got that non-stick layer on. That layer can definitely come off over time. Yeah. Also, you don't get the same sort of smoky flavour of it. So the reason for seasoning a carbon steel wok is to create that sort of natural non-stick layer. But even if you get a wok like ours is the round bottom wok over there, you get it to that point, you still need to know that heat thing. If you put, say, uh, an egg into a lukewarm wok, it'll just stick to that wok, no matter what wok it is. If you put it into a smoking hot wok, or like the oil is smoking hot, 
then it will want to jump out like you're sort of dipping your toe into a really hot bath. Does it actually affect the flavour then, this seasoning? I guess it does, as yeah, you use the word seasoning. Yeah, it does, because it, over time, you say, you, you, a carbon layer of grease, essentially, that's been yeah. burnt onto that wok over time. Yeah. And so you'll get more and more sort of smokiness and it's almost like, you know, when you're cooking with clay pots and things like that, you get that mm. earthy flavour. Yes, you? Yeah. like a proper tandoor, for example, makes things taste. Yeah. Smoky. Yeah, the way you explain the beans on the side of the wok are kind of like I a tandoor to me. Yeah, yeah I, haven't, I haven't done beans in the wok yet. I mean, Not that you'd admit publicly. No, <laughs> but only because I hadn't thought of it, to be honest. Are you a great wok user, Rachel? I should have asked you that earlier. I don't have a proper one, oh. which is why I'm giving it a go with the nice clean one and starting from scratch. You're going to start from scratch, so I'm going to get you started sh mm -hmm. straight away because this is taking okay. a little while. Should we take mine away? Well, no, we, what we can do is whilst Rachel's scrubbing, we'll get you to finish off seasoning okay. your wok. Yeah. Right. So yours, obviously, it's brand new, so it's going to take a bit more effort. Uh -huh. I'd get the gloves on because okay. there's a fair amount of washing up liquid in there and we don't want to ruin your delicate hands. So we've got a metal scrub in there. Really give this a proper scrub okay. all the way around, inside and out. Mm -hmm. My okay. guess is that a sticky label would affect the flavour quite drastically, wouldn't it? <laughs> is that it? the test of me scrubbing yeah, yeah. it hard enough? Yeah, yeah. make sure the sticky label You want to really get that. Off. Okay, so I'm going to move you over a little just so that you don't get burnt. This will be and just putting you to one Ooh, side, Rachel. That's a good oh, start already. A already. <laughs> <laughs> On yours, James. I think we can go straight into re-oiling that, but you like re-oil it all the way around the base and then all the way around the sides. Cold. Yeah, cold. And then we'll okay. get burning that and you'll see it change colour. Yeah. This is? That's just vegetable oil. Vegetable yeah. oil? Yeah. Okay, so how that's much? Oil, that's, that's actually, that's, that's plenty. Just rub that all the way around. Give it a proper scrub, get your get elbows in into it. Yeah, make sure you look like you can see sort of scratches into it. Okay. It has got that residual... Uh, ma manufacturing residue. Yeah, residue, yeah. that's it, residue. So would you always say use vegetable oil rather than olive oil? It's got to be high heating. That's why when I sort of scoffed at, at the olive oil thing, because olive oil is quite a low smoking point. And so you're trying to get this to a point where you're, you're, you're really smoking the wok up. Some people say you should never cook, you should never fry with olive oil because it doesn't actually get hot enough. It yeah. burns before it's... Well, obviously, if you said that to, you know, a whole load of Spanish people or, or Greek people, they'd probably... <laughs> you should yeah. kick your head in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay, so... Can I just, getting... sorry, before we yeah. go on, in, in places like um, China and Thailand, what is the default oil? Uh, Corn oil, groundnut oil, yep. th those, are, those are the ones, and peanut oil sometimes used a lot in restaurants I've, as well. I've tried yeah. peanut oil, yeah. Yeah, but obviously here, I, I mean, there's a lot of peanut allergies as well now, so yeah, I kind of stay clear of peanut oil myself. But um, the highest heating oil, which we use a lot for one of our customers, is um, is avocado oil, but it's super expensive. I didn't know there expensive. was such a thing, I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was, what, what is it guys? One, 20 avocados in one bottle. 20 avocados in one bottle. Ooh. And the bottle's not that big. <laughs> and avocados aren't cheap, are yeah. they? <laughs> yeah. Another reason millennials can't afford houses. Yeah. Right. It's on we'll, the heat, we've got the heat on we've high. We've got it on high. Big flames. Right, we'll let, it, we'll let it burn. And what you want to do is you want to let it burn to a smoking point and then let it smoke and then, it, and then get it to a point where it stops smoking. With the heat still on? Yes. Oh. Because what what you see in smoke is the oil that you oh, just brushed off. Here we go. There look. you go. Yes. <laughs> right. And as you see the smoke form, wherever the fire is, it will start to turn colour. And you'll see like the base of your wok starting to go blacker as we speak. Yes. Are we getting this? Can you see this, camera people? My wok is on fire. Can you see? There you go. Yeah, yeah. Look. So that is now becoming as black as... It's almost as if either your wok toss is so good that you're sort of flicking food over there and it's like creating more heat over here, or your hob somehow, maybe it's because you're so tall, you're yeah, maybe cooking Yeah, I could be, I could be. Dish like that a little. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that every part of your wok goes to that colour. We're pretty much there on the base now. And then, where you probably the first time you use it didn't do, was you want to hold it up and do the same all the way around your Yeah, no, it's happening there. Now you can see it. Look, there it's go. going golden, and then it'll go brown, and then it will go black. Yeah, 
And the first, if, if it was brand new, so you'll see with Rachel's on there, it will go all these sort of bluey, like purpley, pinky colours, like is a that, sheen. Is that actually tempering the steel then? Because those yes. are the colours of tempering. Exactly. Right, so I'll let you do that with the rest of your wok. From here on in, it's like watching a boiling pan of water. <laughs> uh, is this a sort of fire and forget thing? Do you do it once and once, then your wok once. is done? Yeah, unless you're cooking like loads of like vinegary, like acidy stuff in a new wok, you should only really have to do it once. Yeah. But don't scrub it off, so don't use the wire scrubber once you've seasoned it. It's actually wok. all right. Is it? Yeah, because as you say, you've got to, after this, there is some maintenance to it. Like a lot of people wash their wok, whether it's with a scrub or a sponge, and then just dry it with a tea towel and put it in the cupboard. Yeah. You can't do that, it's carbon steel, or rust after about 10 minutes. Yes. So you're right in saying that you've got to dry your wok. As soon as you finish cleaning it, dry it on the hob. If you dry it on the hob, it's basically re itself at that point anyway. Yes, I also find it incredibly satisfying to, once I finish you know, rubbing it with my soft brush, to then put it on the heat and just watch the little droplets of water dance around and then they sort of go Yes. And they move to the yeah, sides yeah, yeah. and then one, they just... One of our customers calls it the mercury ball effect. It's it is like, like a mercury ball, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. that. That's, what do we think? that's looking great now. That's a good looking wok. It's also <laughs> extremely hot. It's roasting my face. <laughs> even this, this. The thing that annoys me about my own cooking, which is clearly not particularly good, is that I'm someone who generally likes undercooked things. Right. So I like, I like raw Japanese type things. Okay. I like crispy vegetables, al dente pasta, yep. crispy things from the wok, um, but I tend to overcook everything because I'm neurotic. I, I, I don't do it quickly <laughs> enough. I made a stir fry the other day and it took about 25 minutes and I thought, yeah. that can't be right. It should only take five minutes. Yeah, I, I said on a domestic hob, no more than three to five minutes. Well, right, I'm going to stand to one side now and watch okay. Rachel mess this up. So straight on, straight on. Straight on. Yeah, because it'll, no, it'll dry it. Is it still really hot, James? Yeah, I was wondering, because I've got this half-eaten sticky bun. <laughs> I can, I'm just wondering if I give it a quick warm in my wok. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'll just warm up my piece of bread. So, the difference is, obviously, yours is brand new, so yep. it, it won't be, it won't get as black okay. as that wok over there. What it will do is it will go to those sort of bluey, pink sheen mm -hmm. colours. Yep. Yeah. You can see it turning now. Yep. So it'll start brown, and then it'll start to go... We're doing this once and you have to do it all the way round, mm. okay? And then we'll do the oil after that. Mm -hmm. So it's two burns. Okay. Yeah. Obviously in between, just let it cool because we don't want you to put your oil hands onto yeah. the hot wok. But it's nice and quick. It's, it, it, you know, yeah, this whole process, it's gone. 10, 10, 15 minutes max. Yeah. Look, uh, so that'd be colour. So, so yeah. that, the only bit we're missing is probably that bit there. We'll keep that up. Try not to burn the handle. I was going to say, do you ever set the handle on fire? <laughs> Just so you don't burn yourself, you want to yeah. let that cool for okay. a couple of minutes. Once it's cool enough, get a little bit of oil around, brush that all the way around, and then burn that again, and then your wok will be ready to cook with as well. I feel like a lot of people would be like, oh, I don't want to get my wok to that stage because it looks like it's burnt. I think people have still kind of got that kind of wanting I mean, to keep their pans looking nice and clean. People still are unsure you know, where, like, how far they, yeah. they have to push it. Yeah. The key is burn it, properly burn it. It's interesting you're talking about mums. My mother would look at that and say, that's a right mess, I better clean yeah. that up. And would <laughs> spend all day until it, until it was shiny again. Yeah, like, imagine putting my mum and your mum in the room at the same time. Constant war of wok. <laughs> I would just like to say, whilst you're working on your wok, do you have um, like a sponge wipe? Because Rachel's made a shocking Yes, mess. I really it have. Appalling. <laughs> it's fine. It's all just over the it, floor. Just take all... a tea towel. You had one simple there. job. You just had to wash a wok in a bowl. <laughs> you know, a lot of people set their houses on fire in Hong Kong. <laughs> to be honest, not a lot of people really cook in Hong Kong. Really? Because the, the houses, the flats are really small. But kitchens, partic particularly, are, t are tiny. Right. Good food is so readily available. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. actually sometimes, especially for one or two people, more expensive to go to the market and buy the ingredients that are required than it is to go and eat some street food. Yes. I've, I've often maintained that actually cooking is foolish because <laughs> why not just get a professional to do it for you? <laughs> 
It's like building your own television, or you know, you wouldn't do that, so why cook your own food? But it is quite good fun. It has the added effect of making you appreciate a perfectly standard, say, Chinese takeaway, because once you've had a go at making one yourself, you realise how good the, the real one Yeah, Yeah, I mean, but in the takeaway, you'll see that they'll have hobs, like gas hobs, that have like, the minimum is like 32 jets of three-phase gas. Wow. Yeah. The real strong ones are like double that, so 64 jets of three-phase gas is pretty strong heat. Because yeah. even this is warm now. I mean, so like, this, this will cook in, a stir fry in yeah. like three minutes. In the restaurants, you're talking like 45 seconds to a minute. I've got to be honest, that's one of the reasons I, I, I like if I go out to eat. I do like um, Asian, sort of wok style Asian food. Because if you go to a restaurant and you have, a, say, a shepherd's pie, <laughs> yeah. they always claim, oh, you know, you know, we make a shepherd's pie. And you, you order it and it arrives five minutes later. And I know right. you can't make a shepherd's pie in, in five, five minutes. minutes. <laughs> but if you order a Thai stir fry and it arrives three minutes later, you think, well, that is actually how long it takes to make. So they are right. actually making that. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It can't possibly be pre-made. That, no, that there's stuff work. that's like pre-prepared. Yeah, yeah, pre-chopped. Yeah, pre-chopped or maybe pre-blanched in like some hot water. But apart from that, everything's fresh. But that's done. But you can yes. see, if you if we show the, the comparison, Bear two in mind, years. mine's got a bit of sticky sultana in it now. <laughs> yeah, two it? years plus some sticky sultana, <laughs> and then brand new. And you can see the colour difference from a used wok versus brand new. This is the first time I've ever been ahead of you in cooking, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> so do we want to do a little uh, a mercury board test? Do you want to yeah, do let's go for it. Can we grab some light soy and... Grab some balls of mercury for us to cook. <laughs> the bloke who sold me this said that when you check that it's hot, you, you splash water with your fingers and if it sits around, it's not hot enough. If it goes and it's gone, you've actually got it slightly too hot. When it's right, it should take about half a second for the blobs of water to disappear. Is that rubbish? No, I think that makes sense, yeah. I'll show you what I mean. So, Can we just film in here all the time, like compared to the bunker, James? It's <laughs> yes, this isn't the bunker. Yes, all right. Sorry. The bunker is I don't want to come to the bunker. You don't. <laughs> None of it is epic or awesome or banging. It's shit. So that, it's still too cold, look, the water is yeah. still sitting there. It will evaporate, there yeah. it goes, but yeah. that's Whoa. close. Yeah, I'd say another yeah. 15 seconds. I'd say that's about right. Yes, I agree, yeah, you, you bang on. Because when I started looking at what, I was looking at the non-stick ones, because yeah. I had no idea what I was talking about, and he saw me and he sort of sidled over with this in his hand and he said, <laughs> you want this you want. one. Even something as sticky as dark soy, which has quite a lot of sugar in it, yeah, it should do the same thing. You see? And it doesn't skip yeah. quite a lot, but uh, as much, but it creates the bubbles. Yeah. And there you go. That one's that's almost like a ball bearing. Yeah. If you crack an egg into it, if it bubbles up straight away in a wok, then you know it's hot enough at that point. You might not want it to be crisp up, so you then have to change the heat after it's gone in. Yes, by what? Lifting it off? Lifting it up. Like the first way would be lift it up. Yeah. The second way would be stir, like folding or stirring. It's a stir fry, you know? And then the third way is like, really like pushing and folding it in. The real classic way is giving it a proper wok toss. <laughs> is that a, is that a, <laughs> I've never done a wok right, toss. So it's a long push forward and a quick flick back. The best way to practice that yeah. would be to get a tea towel, wrap it up, and then long push forward, quick flick back, ah, you see? Okay. And if it skips up, then you're doing a good job. That's a fantastic tip. Oh, yeah. Practice cooking with a tea towel. <laughs> Right. You want to try the tea towel? I'll try, try the tea, tea towel, towel wok toss. So it's a slow push away. So that's a what, an omelette I've made. Yeah, that's your omelette. Not bad, not bad. Which way is it supposed to? No, that less boaty. That's better. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's yeah. the one you want. No, that was... There, yeah, that there was good. Go. That yeah, turned yeah, over. Did turned you see over. that? It turned <laughs> over. <laughs> that there, guys, is how you season your wok. Thank you very much. That's, um, I'm very excited about cooking something because I'm expecting it to taste as good as my favorite Chinese takeaway now. Guaranteed, if not better. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>